The haunting event is finally happening inside of DMZ and Warzone 2, and inside of Almazra, not only is it a night mode now, but there are tons of mini bosses as part of this haunting event that you can take out. And if you take out five of six of them, you get this lovely weapon blueprint for the Bass P. Looks really cool. It's for the haunting especially. And all you got to do is destroy five of the six bosses and you will unlock it for yourself. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about all six bosses, where to find them and how to defeat them so you can get this weapon blueprint as quick as possible and then just enjoy the rest of the event, enjoy the PvP around the bosses and all that fun stuff. So before I get started, when you launch into our Mazra, if you open your TAC map, you will see the location of the majority of the bosses. You'll be able to see when they spawn when they get killed and then when they respawn because once someone does kill them they do respawn a short time after once someone is out of the area so you don't need to worry about that. The first boss I'm going to talk about is the Butcher. They're doing a direct collaboration with Diablo so this one's quite a fun one. Basically you can find him in the hydroelectric plant, the observatory, Almazra city which is where I find him the most and the cemetery right down the south by Salwa village. You'll also be able to locate this by seeing a massive red beam and a skull floating around in the sky. Just go to this location, you'll see a massive altar of Lilith, and you need to activate each of the Lilith statues within this altar. Inside of that time, you will then get attacked by a bunch of zombies. There are a couple of hit kills, they're not anything strenuous. Just make sure that you don't have any players coming up on you, because you do find that there's quite a lot of PvP around this area. Once all five are done, a portal will appear in the middle of the pentagram. You go in and you go into hell. You're in a boss arena with no escape. There's tons of these really easy zombies, but also the butcher who you will need to defeat. Make sure you've got loads of ammo and don't just bring one weapon like me because you run out of ammo super quick. And if you only have a submachine gun like I did, then it makes life a lot easier and you have to rely on your partners if you're doing this with a team, which I highly recommend. The Butcher's quite a hard one, but he does only melee, so just get some distance, chain the zombies as if it was actually a zombies mode, and you will be able to kill the little zombies when you need ammo, and just attack the Butcher from a distance. You can't use any ammo boxes in here, so bear that in mind as well, and also the portal is open for everyone until the Butcher is defeated. So if you go ahead and, you know, kill the Butcher, just be aware, because after you've done that, players can still come in and ruin your day. Next I'll talk about the swamp creature, by far the easiest one of the lot. All you need to do is go to the marshlands, they only spawn in one location and you'll see a bunch of these egg sacs around the map. The orange ones are the ones you're going to want to locate around this area and you're just going to want to go up to them and press to interact on them. It'll open up like a duffel bag would and eventually you will find a tiara in one of them. Once you've grabbed the tiara, look around for a golden glow coming from one of the small islands around the middle of where all the egg sacs are and you'll see a small pentagram on the floor. All you need to do once you have the tiara in your inventory, go up to that golden glow and it'll ask you to offer the tiara. Once you've done that, three swamp creatures will come out of the water, start chasing you down and throwing stuff at you. They do a little bit of damage, but they're not too bad. They're quick though, and they do have a bit of a bullet sponge. So make sure you're just running around and hitting them and then killing them all. And once you've killed all three, that is that little boss over with. Nice and easy. You'll be able to pick up the tiara off the ground as well once you kill the final one. And that is worth 100 grand. So if you need money, just go ahead and grab that. Nice and easy. Then moving from, in my opinion, the easiest one to the hardest one, you need to go and get the Pharaoh. This is in the Oasis area right at the top. Again, you will see this one on the TAC map if you do open it up. And you can go to the location where the hidden Koshai complex entrance is, and then you'll notice a bunch of glowing AI. You're going to need to kill these AI, and you'll get pop-ups on screen of this little Pharaoh talking to you about bringing the skulls to him. And once you kill this AI, some of them will drop cursed skulls. You need to stow them in your inventory because you do need a lot of them, but they do keep spawning until you've got all of them, so don't worry about that. Once you've done and got all of the cursed skulls, you're going to want to make your way deeper into the underground bit of this little tomb, and you will see a sarcophagus, and underneath it a bunch of candles. And then you're going to want to place the cursed skulls on each of the candles. There's five on each side, so you need ten skulls in total. 
and after that, the Pharaoh will rise. He'll talk about riches, but actually, he's going to try and kill you. At start, he's really slow, so just shoot him consistently. He is really, really a big bullet sponge, but then he does get quicker and quicker. And I have to say, if he sneaks up behind you, he will perform a takedown and he will down you instantly. So if you've got self-revives, it will come in handy. Trust me, he doesn't throw anything at you, but he does get quite quick. And because he's a bullet sponge, every time you need to reload, you need to sprint far enough away from him. You can also sprint him out of the area if one of your teammates actually die from the AI that is still in the area. And obviously the Pharaoh one tapping anyone that he's running behind. If that happens, then you can drag the pharaoh outside of this little tomb and your other teammates, if you've got them, can then revive the others. Once you've killed this guy, a bunch of souls will drop out of him, a few self-revives and a haunted box. This box actually drops ammo and armor at the same time to so use it wisely because it is better than an ammo box upgrade and it lasts between rounds. So if you don't use it in the one game, you can bring it into the next one straight away, no problem. Let's talk about the UFO. This is located in Sawa village on the coastline and you won't just see a UFO flying about. Basically what you'll do is you'll see a massive sort of orb floating in the sky and all the water at the coastline just gone. It looks really cool. Things are floating, all that sort of stuff. You basically shoot that anomaly and then it'll explode. Three more orbs will then pop out of this big one and these don't take as many shots to destroy but they do shoot back and deal quite a bit of damage. So find some cover and shoot one of them at a time. If you do one at a time the ones you're not shooting won't engage you so they'll just spin around in the air while you're shooting the other one. So take them out one at a time and then after you've done those three orbs finally a UFO will pop out the sky. Same thing with the orbs you just shoot it and it will shoot back. This one tries to get over the top of you and then shoot a beam down directly on top of you. So if you keep moving, it's quite easy to destroy. Once you destroyed the UFO, an artifact will fall from it within a 100 meter radius. So just run after that and grab it once it hits the floor. Then all you need to do is go to where that original big anomaly was floating over, the boat that is, you know, missing a load of water, and you will need to drop the artifact inside of a portal that's on that boat. There is tons of AI around it including a juggernaut so getting onto that boat as stealthy as possible will make your life a lot easier because you can't shoot while holding the orb so you're going to want to run in as quick as possible, place it in and that will be the UFO ticked off of your list. Next, this is the ghost train. It's going to be running around the train tracks, the whole map just circling like the normal train does but there's very few areas that you can actually go to get on top of it. So get to the lower area towards the back of the train and then what you're going to want to do is drill the safe at the back of the train. Once you've done that, and it will take a while, you'll still get the helicopters and all the AI chasing after you, so that's a pain anyway. But once you've done that, you can then make your way all the way to the front of the train. And this is where you've got to pay attention because there are tons of booby traps, whether that be claymores, proximity mines, all that sort of stuff. You're going to need to be very careful. Once you go into the inside of the train cars where there's no more windows and it's covered in flesh, you're going to want to be careful. Just make sure you're shooting the claymores and the proximity mines at a distance and make your way slowly up to the front of the train. Right there, you will see another safe which you can open and an altar of Lilith behind it. All you're then going to need to do is pick up the heart of the train and that will be this part of the event over and done with. Now, if you've done all the five in this order, you will have unlocked this weapon blueprint, but just for shits and gigs, I will talk about the last one, which is the evil spirits, and this is where you're going to get jump scared. You may have noticed by looting around the map anyway that random things pop up on screen with really loud noises in certain areas, and these things you're actually going to need to grab hold of. For example, the evil spirits are located in four locations. You've got to find the Reaper by looting containers inside of the quarry in the top left of the map. And by containers, they literally mean any openable loot box. So whether that be a cash register, a filing cabinet, a locker, or an actual loot box, as long as you're opening things like that, you will have a chance to be jump scared in this area. As soon as you do, then don't worry, you can move on to the next area. The next area is finding the ghoul in Al Masra city. Again, just loot the same thing. PCs and all that are in abundance in this area. So as long as you're in Al Masra city by looking at your compass at the top, as long as the zone says Al Masra city, you can be jump scared in that area. 
And then after that, you can go down to Albagra Fortress, right down the bottom of the map, and loot stuff around that area to find the Spectre. And then finally, head just to the right of this area on the map and go to the airport, and you will loot areas to find the Witch. And once you've done all of that, that will be all six things done and dusted, nice and easy, and it's quite fun. If I'm being honest, you'll have a nice weapon blueprint which you can carry over because MW3 carries over all that sort of stuff. And then you can go and check out all of the other things like Vondel and all that sort of stuff and just see what Halloween twist they've put on it. But there you go. That is all six of the bosses and how to get the weapon blueprint for Operation Nightmare. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.